Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode within our Zoom chat series. Today I'm joined by David Yelland who plays David in Avernus and we're going to have a bit of a chat. So welcome David, thank you very much for coming on. Delighted, thank you very much. Um, so first of all, great news uh, that Avernus is premiering at the Toronto Liftoff Film Festival yes. and has also won Best Short um, Thriller and Horror at the London Independent Film Awards. You must be thrilled with this. I'm absolutely knocked out and it's terrific. Well done everybody concerned because, you know, we're hyped just for taking a part in it, you know, but to get the whole thing together. Well done to David and everybody, yeah. Big team, a lot, a lot obviously went into it. Um, so before we come on to Avernus a little bit more, um, I wanted to talk a bit more about your incredibly extensive career that you've had before Avernus. Um, one of which being um, your early television role in 1974 as David Copperfield. Yes, 1974. <laughs> <laughs> an awful lot of people, <laughs> an awful lot of people are thinking, when was that? I said, yeah, <laughs> carry on. No, no, no. I mean, yes, David Copperfield. Yeah. So was this your first role in TV? I think we're going to insert a few photos here so everyone can have a look. Yeah, it was my first role. Um, although... I went, my agent, I was cast in the role and my agent said, well, you know, you've never been in a television studio before. We'd better try and get you in one before you do this big part. So I, I got hold of a part in a short story adaptation of a, an adaptation of a Henry James short story for London Weekend. And I played a small part in that and I got some idea of what went on in a television studio because in those days it was mostly done on videotape and you'd rehearse for a couple of weeks. Then you'd go into a studio for a couple of days and rehearse, record it. And you did always did a bit of pre-filming beforehand, um, but you did need, need to know the ropes a little bit. So okay. I was really grateful to do that. Yeah, have a bit of experience before you got kind of but straight in. <laughs> when, when we did The Copperfield, uh, it was a six episode thing. And, and the very first scene that we shot was the last scene of the last episode. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's filming for you. And we, we were on a beach in Suffolk and um, I had to go into a, a, a clinch with an actress who David Copperfield winds up as his second wife. Uh, and I'd met her, I think, at 6.30 that morning. By 8 o'clock, we were snogging on the beach. So it was quite, <laughs> it was quite sudden. A turn of events. <laughs> it was great fun. So then in 1981, you appeared um, in the Academy Award winning film, Chariots of Fire, um, as the Prince of Wales. So tell me, how did this come about? Well, like anything else, you know, you go up for these things. Some things you, you get, some things you don't. I went along and met a couple of people. Uh, originally, I think I was up, up for one of the runners. Um, maybe they took one look at me and thought, well, you know, he's not much of a runner, I don't know. <laughs> But I did later learn that I was the first person to be cast in the film um, of the people who had not done very much at that time uh, because they thought that I looked a little bit like him, a little bit like <laughs> the Prince of Wales, you know. So that was an advantage for you then? You've got to use your imagination now because it's a few years ago. But um, <laughs> um, yeah, so but, but I mean, obviously they'd, they'd got some very well-known actors in it already like John Gielgud and Ian Holm you know, recently we lost. Um, but the rest of us uh, were completely unknown at that time. That was quite strange for you then, going in thinking you were doing one thing and then coming out doing a completely different role. <laughs> well, there was a bit of a lapse of time before, you know, they actually offered me the role, but, but okay. I learned that that was, that was the case. And uh, that was a couple of weeks. Great fun. Up, up in Liverpool. Um, because it was set, you know, the, the Prince of Wales stuff was set in the Olympics stadium and in in history it was Paris so oh going to Paris you know lovely fantastic no no it was it was uh, just outside Liverpool and nothing can Liverpool it's not Paris do you know what I mean no nowhere near Paris <laughs> there we go. Yeah. so um you have a very extensive list of theatre credits um but without going through all of them can I ask you which role you are most proud of or which play kind of sticks out to you? I mean, it's, it's you know, I worked it out actually, this, this is July and I would have been doing it for 49 years. So if I started talking about it all, it would, it would go a bit, yeah. um, get a bit dull, I think. 
Uh, yeah, next year will be 50 years and I'm going to have to break open a glass of something, I think. Next oh, year. 100%. Some champagne, um, I think. I mean, obviously the Copperfield thing was very exciting. You know, it was terrific. But um, most of my work has been in the theatre. And I suppose the work that I did for the late Sir Peter Hall would be uh, amongst the highlights. I mean, that was just a terrific experience. I worked with him on many, many productions. And I was lucky enough to play Henry IV in the you know, Shakespeare thing for him, which was the last uh, play that he directed. Oh, wow. Um, because he became a little ill after that. Um, so, yeah, so that was terrific. We did both parts of the Henry IV thing, parts one and two. And um, it, it worked. It, people liked it, and, and it was just great to be part of something that was you know, amongst Shakespeare's best plays. It's a smashing part, and it was a good production, so... In a way, I, obviously I'm most proud of it. I mean, I've done things probably which um, perhaps were better and other things which were not so good. You know, it's not for you to judge, really. Mm. I guess as well, for you, this, like your list is so long that I think there's probably, you like different things for different reasons. <laughs> well, absolutely. I mean, you know, sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes you, do, you do things which take you to nice places. Mm. You know, we're not immune to the fact that, oh, my goodness, I'm going on a plane to Hong Kong to do something or this or whatever. I mean, back years and years ago, I was, I was flown to New Zealand to make a little commercial. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's the only time I've ever been to New Zealand in my life. I was there for about a week. But they flew me all the way there to swing a golf club, which didn't <laughs> have very much... enjoyable to... for you. <laughs> <laughs> enjoyable as a golf club. I mean, that's really how... How this thing came about, I and mean, it's how I know David Juicer is primarily from golf. Um, we, and we, in fact, we're playing next week. So, before we get on to Avernus quickly, let's take a little look at you in the trailer. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think you're here, Jack? How do you mean? In this room. Why are you here? So, without giving too much away, um, how would you describe your character to our viewers? Well, I mean, he's going to look like me, so bad luck if you're expecting a big sort of makeup. <laughs> <clears throat> you're going to look like me with slightly shorter hair, because my hair is, is lockdown hair. Pre-lockdown um, hair. <laughs> I think the last haircut I had was about a month after uh, we shot the film. I can't really say too much about it without giving it away because it's a short film you start saying well this was the case and that was the case it is a, a, a scene where I'm talking clearly to the, the main character Jamie Bamber played by Jamie Bamber and he is keen to know something and I possess the answer that's about as far as I can take it I think yeah that's all you're giving away to be fair I think that's good though that's that's enough <laughs> So your character's name in Avernus is David. And when I was speaking to David, the writer and producer, I was asking him why the character name is David. Like, was it after himself, David? And he turned around to me, he was like, no, he named it after you because he wanted you to play the role. So when he then approached you saying, you know, I'd like you to play David in Avernus, did you then feel obligated to take it? Or, or what were your thoughts? I was just, as I always am, deeply flattered that anybody remotely offers me to anything. You know, I mean, <laughs> then when I read it uh, and he explained the, the the plot, the idea of the film, that was intriguing, and of course, I wanted to do it. Of course, you know, no, no question. As for feeling obligated, I suppose if I'd said, "Well, I don't want to do this," he might not have played golf with me again. But <laughs> that wasn't the major consideration. And you might have lost a golf partner, which is quite important. Might have lost a golf partner, which is very important. <laughs> So, was this your first short film, or had you done other short films before? Um, I, I've done a couple. I can't. I, mean, I know one involved trying to look like Ernest Hemingway, um, but I can't. I can't remember whether I ever finally saw it or not. Okay. I, I think I did. I think I did. But no, I mean, I've not done a lot of it, to be frank. No must have been quite different from what you're used to then because of time span from a short film shooting in two days compared to... Well, yeah, actually the production values, if you like, to, 
to call it that, were very high on this, I think. Mm. Um, yeah, they were. Really uh, wonderful sort of people working on it from all angles, both in front of the camera and behind. So one didn't feel, oh, you know, this is all sort of cobbled together at the last minute. It was very, very well planned and some extremely good people involved. So it wasn't in any way different from um, a, a perhaps a, a longer major television production. Or yeah. Like so I understand before lockdown and coronavirus happened as well, um, you're about to go to New York with The Habit of Art, um, a play by Alan Bennett. So what happened with that? Because obviously lockdown... Well, we, we, we did it before, back in uh, 2018, and we remounted it and we rehearsed it in rehearsed it in March when all this virus thing was just beginning to kick off and um, we got to the point where we were just about to open mm. and then and then it, we went into, into lockdown and but not before we were able to record it for uh, YouTube or whatever it's called um, you know, yeah. for online thing um, which you can in fact still look at I think but we, we've arranged to do it next year instead Oh, nice. Um, yeah, and we, we're going to take it out on the road again here and then go over to New York for a month or so. Oh, wow. Sounds like something to look forward to. At least you, like you said, you got the recording of it done just before. Absolutely. Yeah. I was very, very far seeing of the, of the producers to sort of get that done. Um, but um, it was only, we were able to do that, I think, because we had done it before. It was, it was yeah. you know, we, we knew what we were doing. Hmm. So finally, uh, what do you miss most during lockdown? Miss? Oh, gosh. Well, I mean, the, 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 the thing which everybody says is physical touch, isn't it, and everything, but then, you know, uh, well, I do. I mean, I, I haven't been able to sort of embrace my grandchildren and uh, kids and stuff, um, which is a, a very big deal. But I think just the ordinary things, you know, like everybody else, being able to walk down the street without feeling that, person coming towards me is a threat yeah <laughs> you know that's the the the, the feeling of um, ordinariness it really is is what i miss yeah well hopefully we'll be back to normal soon fingers crossed absolutely yeah um but thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak to me today uh we really appreciate it pleasure Thank you. Uh, and thank you everyone for watching. Uh, if you haven't already seen the trailer and we just showed you a clip of in this, then it's on our YouTube channel, Blue Elephant Films. Um, and it's also linked on all our social media platforms. But thank you very much for watching and we'll be back with another episode soon.